Come on and give God the praise. Let's stand to our feet as we begin our praise and worship this morning. We come to lift up the name of Jesus. We come to give him the glory. We come to give him the honor. There is none like him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I come to rejoice and give him praise. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, put your hands together. Here we go. Psalm simply says this. Oh, my soul will bless the Lord. All that is within me. Oh, my soul will bless the Lord, all that is within me say, oh, my soul, come on, will bless the Lord, all that is within me, oh, my soul, will bless the Lord, all that is within me, and that's what he's done, every battle he has won.
Hallelujah. We still in the place of praise in this place. Yeah. Yeah. It's a celebration on today. Many didn't make it, but 11 years, here y'all are again. Yeah. So we're going to stand to our feet and we're going to have a good time in the Lord. Clap your hands in the room today, yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. Can y'all help me sing, yeah? Oh. see the light oh yeah i can see the light coming i can see the light yeah yeah, yeah. i can see the light oh something that's in your way. It won't let. Tell it it won't let. It won't let. It won't let.
Oh, no. Hallelujah. 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 Give God praise right there for just a second. Give God worship. See, sometimes we move too quick. But the Lord is saying, I want a specific worship from you today. Hallelujah. So when I was praying, I said, Lord, what do you want me to minister to them today? I want you to know he told me to take it back for you. Because many don't know the trials and the tears that you may have. But God is good. Glory, glory. They said I wouldn't make it. And they said I wouldn't be here today. They said I would not amount to anything. But, but I'm glad to say. still holding on to this one. Lord. See, when I was young, I gave God my hand and I told him to lead the way. Oh. And then the road's been rough and the going's been mighty tough. Here to stay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See, I've been talked about, y'all. Anybody been talked about? I've been criticized. Y'all, I had to wipe so many tears from my eyes. But I'm still
say that good. Hey, I feel the, you've been good, God. You've been good, God. Hey, you are the mighty God. You are Elohim. You are El Shaddai. Hey, 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 hey. See, some of us, we got to go into deeper. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are good. Give God praise in this place. Give God glory. He's better than that. He's better than that. He's better than that. He's been good to me. Eleven years. God said I'll be there for you to the end. I am, I am, I am, I am God. Glory, 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 glory. I'll never give up. I'll never give up. There is a payout in the name of Jesus. And we give God glory in this room today. Hallelujah. And I'll never let.
Hallelujah. Good morning, New Legacy. And thank you for being here to celebrate with us as we celebrate our pastor and first lady, Yolanda Davis. This is their 11th year, and an 11 year of imparting into you and I. And we are so, so appreciative for what they have done. And we are also thankful for our upcoming speaker. We look forward to you imparting into us this day. And without any other further delay, I'm going to ask Pastor Willis to come forward. Originally, I know many of you all was coming to hear Bishop Charles Wallace. Bishop Wallace had an unexpected surgery, but he's doing fine. The pastor and I have also spoken to him, but he's doing well. But God always is faithful. And we thank God for his faithfulness. And that manner that mantra and that anointing that we were anticipating being on the bishop is now on this brother here. And brother, we look forward to hearing from God. Thank you. All right. Family, what's going on? This wonderful morning. It's still morning. What's going on, family? I was about to use my youthful legs and get up there, but then these pants said, you bet not. We're going to go viral for a whole nother reason. Amen. I am so happy to be here. Um, I'm, I'm finally, as I keep getting older and the world keeps getting crazy, I finally understand what the old school means when it's good to be seen. You know how you get up there, brother, and say, it's good to see, it's good to be seen, good to be seen. It's good to be seen on the side of the ground. And then I get to preach a word in this beautiful place, New Legacy Community Church for my peoples. Can we give it up for them for their 11th year? One more time, give it up for pastor. Yo, pastor. As we honor them for their commitment and sacrifice. And if your pastor didn't tell you, he's a pastor's pastor. He is a pastor's pastor. He is my spiritual covering, and I do take it as an honor to be standing before him and also, I know he's going to critique every part of this sermon and talk to me later about it. So I'm going to try to do my best. But he is a confidant to me. He's a relevant sage. And I always try to uh, tell people it's, it's, it's something to be relevant. Not to just be given information, but just to be given relevant information. Um, I can trust him to give me advice and protect the integrity of the gospel and the sanctity of whatever role that I'm trying to pursue. I love him and his wife because they did 
what what I thought at one time others wouldn't. They, if if you've seen me before, you know they opened their home up to me uh, when I didn't have anywhere else to go, and taught me so many things. And then when I look back and I see where I'm standing now, I start to, I was really starting to cry as I prepared this message because I didn't know sleeping in that back room what type of ground I was sleeping on. I retired my eyes one way and woke up trying to preach a word. I don't know what it is on that carpet that you have. But I'm also glad that when I come to him, I know he's not going to give me some advice that's handcuffed to a flawed tradition. Your pastor is, is, is up in age and seasoned, but he's still a new cat. If y'all ever talk to him and seen the things that comes off his mind, he's still new school in the heart. I don't know about y'all, but my spidey senses go up when, when, when I hear people uh, try to tell me something, and, and one of the first things that they try to tell me is this is the way we always do it. That, that makes my skin crawl, my spinal sisters go up, and, then, and I'm saying that's your best argument for doing what you're doing. But if we're going to always do what we used to do, let's go ahead and bring back the colored water fountains and the priority seating that we used to have for the lightly complected people. Let's go ahead and bring those back. But I don't know about y'all, but the devil is a liar. I'm not sitting in the back. And I'm not drinking from no special water fountain. I choose to drink from the filtered water fountain. <laughs> but I always like to tell people, don't try to hamper God. Because even in the Old Testament, in Isaiah chapter 43, he tells us to remember not the former things nor consider the things of old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. And I just love how we're doing a new thing in my life and, and, and in New Legacy's life and, and in the life of all the people in Montgomery, Alabama. Did y'all see that? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That was wonderful. Anyway, I digress. I digress. Your pastor believes believes in the word, but then also he believes in moving in obedience to the Holy Spirit. He doesn't make a move, and he taught me that. Don't make a move until you talk to God about it. And, uh, and then when he's too harsh, I can go to Mama Davis and, 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 and talk to her, and she, she, she cools me down when he heats me up. I love it. I am Pastor Gregory R. Willis. I put the R in there because my father's name is Gregory Willis, and I was taught initially when I became 18, and all the bill collectors start coming, call, start calling me. No, that was my daddy. Uh, I'm Gregory R. Willis, uh, not the junior. That's not that's not my bill. I wasn't old enough to sign no paperwork, so I make sure I put Gregory R. Willis. But I bring you greetings from David's Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. Um, and we always are excited when we have another good fellowship and another good sister church that's in the fight trying to spread the good gospel. Anybody trying to spread the gospel? Amen. Amen. Uh, my, my wife sends her love. She's uh, holding it down uh, back at the uh, home front at church. Uh, my three little ones, um, Emery, Justice, and, and uh, Ryan, six, four, and newly three, they seen their disobedience on uh, with them. Uh, I love them. I really do. Sometimes I stick my chest out in pride, and sometimes I shake my head in bewilderment, and me and my wife argue about who kid that is. Anybody can testify to y'all do that? Oh, that's your baby. That's your side. That ain't, that ain't my side. But they're mine and their will is strong and I wouldn't trade them in for the world. I'm so glad I serve a God that's the same way. 
Because if we be honest in this room, he looks down on us, and sometimes he sticks his chest out in pride, and sometimes he'll shake his head at us. You know what I'm talking about. Lord, forgive me for what I'm about to do right now. Oh, so ain't nobody had that pre-prayer? Pops, I thought you said we had a real church in here. Lord, if you just get me out of this one. Oh, okay, 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 okay. All right. But I want to go ahead and stay with the theme today and let everyone know that in Jeremiah chapter 3, even though verse 15 is good, the verses preceding that are also good because it sets up exactly what Jeremiah had to go through. And so if we look at Jeremiah chapter 3, I'm going to start at verse 10, and I'm going to read from the NLT version. And while people are trying to find it and, and press it in their Bible, can you just do me a favor and, and let somebody know this morning, you're special. Yeah, 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 you, you really are special. You really are special. Sometimes people need to hear something good in their life. In the morning being all terrible. Let them know you're special. God touched you this morning for a special reason. You didn't just get extra days. And you're not getting brownie points because you came here to, to clap for pastor. He put you on the road and started you on the right path for a reason this morning. And that's because you're special. If you got it, let's read. It says, but despite all this, her faithless sister Judah has never sincerely returned to me. She has only pretended to be sorry. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the Lord said to me, even faithless Israel is less guilty than treacherous Judah. So we got two people we're talking about. We got faithless Israel and that old treacherous Judah. Verse 12, therefore, go and give this message to Israel. He's talking to Jeremiah. This is what the Lord says. Oh, Israel, my faithless people, come home to me again, for I am merciful. I will not be angry with you forever. Tell somebody, it's not forever. It's not forever. Only acknowledge your guilt. Hmm. He said, acknowledge your guilt. Admit that you have rebelled against the Lord your God and committed adultery against him by worshiping idols under every green tree. The Lord said, not one tree, not some tree, but every green tree you done worship idols under. Confess that you refuse to listen to my voice. I, the Lord, have spoken. Return home, you wayward children says the Lord, for I am your master. I will bring you back to the land of Israel, one from this town, two from the family, from wherever you are scattered. In your keynote, and I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will guide you with knowledge and understanding. I always like to pray together corporately, so if you could repeat after me. Lord, do your will. Lord, have your way. Help me to receive today. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to try to be brief as possible. I told you who was my spiritual covering, so if I go long, do you know why? Here we go. The subject on this 11th pastoral anniversary is the pressure of the driver's seat. The pressure of the driver's seat. The prophet Jeremiah was called to do one of the most daunting tasks, and that's why I had to read the verses before it to let you know where Jeremiah is coming from. He's being asked to go deliver a word to a people who have been doing their own thing. 
Now, I remind you now, these are the people that were captive in Egypt, but then he set them free, and then now they done got loose as a goose out here and then started listening to the wrong people. Anybody ever listen to the wrong advice? Some of, our, some of our bank accounts can tell the story, listening to the wrong advice, trying to get rich quick. I, no. well, I, well, let me put my hand down. If y'all ain't gonna raise y'all hand, that's fine. I know I tried it. So, but they fell into some bad teachings and they were just about to be put under judgment by God through the Babylonians. He was about to use them to overturn them. And then I see God loving on his people even when they didn't love him back. Y'all see that? He said, I'll take one, I'll take two, just, just anybody any, from anywhere, if they would just come on back to me, if you would just repent. But one of the notes I want to tell you, it's hard to move people that think they know everything. <laughs> you got your notes. Go ahead and write that down. Go ahead and write that down. It's hard to move people that think they know everything. You want to try to tell them it's one thing, and they before you can finish your sentence, they telling you how that ain't going to work. You, 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 they, and then you sitting there like, you asked me. <laughs> but you can't tell nobody or move people that know everything. Or worse, people who done became comatose by routine and tradition. They don't want to do what you ask them because that's going to put them in an uncomfortable space because they're not used to doing it that way. Sometimes we become comatose in tradition and, and, and we keep doing things over and over and wonder why it's not working. Somebody told me that's the definition of insanity. And we keep doing it over and over looking at God and God just says, behold, I've been trying to tell you to do a new thing. But you keep yourself handcuffed and to the old. How long are we going to stay handcuffed to something that doesn't produce? Some of our relationships are in trouble right now because we done fell into a deep sleep of an ineffective routine and tradition. I'm here to tell you this morning, you better bust a move. <laughs> you better bust a move before that relationship flatlines and now you're in a panic trying to figure out how to revive it. Sometimes you gotta spice it up. I see a lot of brothers in here. I'm just trying to tell you, sometimes you gotta <laughs> spice it up. Say, I pray, the, uh, to the good Lord. I said, make sure my sermon goes uh, 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 exactly where you want it to go. And then I look up and I see all these brothers in here and I said, oh yeah, I'm, I'm in the right place. Sometimes we got to spice it up. So keep her guessing. Amen. Jeremiah had a task on his hands. Yes, he did. But God told him to tell the people if they would just repent, and come back to get on track with God, he will take him to Zion. And that is the place back with favor. In the whole book of Jeremiah, I need you to read it. But you really can't appreciate Jeremiah without understanding the pressure of the driver's seat. You can't really understand the weight of what he had to do because it's heavy in the driver's seat. The driver's seat is when you take charge, you take responsibility, you take accountability. And that's something that can't be taken lightly because there has to be a transference of ownership when you start talking about taking the driver's seat. A lot of us got to 
stop taking titles, not understanding that with titles come roles and with roles comes expectations. There's this quote that says, pressure is rewarding because that means there's an expectation on you. See, see, when don't nobody expect nothing of you, then, then you don't have a whole lot of pressure. A lot, of, a lot of people in their relationships don't feel a lot of pressure because there's not a lot of expectation on them and then the relationship's not going anywhere. Okay, back in my notes. We got to make sure that we understand that that old saying, I hear people say sometimes, oh, the title don't mean nothing. That's far from the truth. Because when you start t- thinking about being a pastor, if it was just preaching sermons, that would be easy. I love watching the video because they talked about how Pops was a great administrator. I said, okay, so they getting it. It, it. it goes more than just getting up here preaching on Sunday. How does he manage the finances? How does he manage the elements of, of church. And, and, and people don't understand the pressure that it takes to not only do those things, but make sure that though every aspect is relevant and purposeful and fruitful. Because he has the weight of his shoulders on him because God has given him the assignment. Sometimes when those children get real wayward and you think about dropping them off at the fire station. Oh, that's me. I'm sorry. I've been on assignment to these babies. I, I can't leave them at the fire station. And they said you can leave them there and not get prosecuted. I, I don't know. I just, I, I didn't look it up, but I just <laughs> saw it. But we don't have pastoral anniversaries to put our pastors and first ladies on a pedestal. We have them to honor them for taking up the mantle that it is, the pastoral ship. Taking on the burden and sacrificing things because he has to figure out how to do church and life all at the same time. Because the first lady is the first lady here, but also she's the only lady at home. So he going to need some time to, 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 to bless the house and bless the house. Amen. <laughs> or it might be some trouble. There has to be some balance. And that is where he has to handle the pressure. But, I don't, but, but to make sure that you also understand it, we can't take on the title of husband if all we're going to do is pay the bills and sample the streets. Because as we take on the title of husband, then we take on the role of husband, then there's an expectation on that word husband. We can't take on the title of daddy and, and only buy school supplies and school clothes. Only showing up at the birthday party. Only showing up when the school called because he doesn't got out of line. It takes more than being a daddy. We can't take the title of trying to be a wife and we still want to have hot girl summers. <laughs> Even spiritually, we can't take the title of being a Christian and think just because we put a cross on and we can recite some Sunday school scriptures that we can call ourselves a Christian. Because with the title comes a role and with the role comes expectation. If you're with me, say expectation. It comes an expectation. And, and you want to, don't ever want to be caught claiming something that you really are not. It's the pressure of taking on the role. I'm on the pressure number two if you're writing it down. The pressure of next. The pressure of next. 
in the driver's seat, you have the pressure of trying to steer the direction and the progress of the vehicle. And they always want to know what's next. But then you say, well, where's the pressure in that? Because if I fail, you say I'm incompetent. If I succeed, now there's pressure to even go higher. And then if I'm tired and I don't do anything, then you say I ain't got no vision. So where do I turn? How do I have the confidence to still go for the next? In the home, brothers, single parent homes, we got to have a vision for where the family is going. If you don't have a vision for where the family is going, then we're all just spinning our wheels. And a woman is made to multiply what she is given. And if you're not giving nothing for her to multiply, she can come complacent. And then start trying to search for something else to multiply because it's in her nature that I need to multiply. So my brothers in this house, and I don't know why I keep talking to brothers in here. We got to make sure I got a hand clap in the house. I'm on it. <laughs> we got to make sure we got vision. Because you understand that the pastor has to figure out what's next, but doesn't even know what's next. Everybody thought they knew what next was until COVID came. Nobody saw that coming. And then all of a sudden, we had to figure out how to do church from the house. And now, since we're uh, um, tiptoeing out of COVID, because some, some people say, you know, they missed church for about two or three weeks saying they got COVID. And, and, and I'm not saying that they ain't telling the truth, but they got it. But now we're trying to tiptoe out of COVID, and now we, people that got used to what we used to do, now it's hard to try to get them out of the house. So now the church is bewildered again. Now do I, how do I teach and preach them that they need to be in the house when I was telling them that they could be saved from the house? Where do we go from here? So now the, now the pastor has to figure out how to pull them off of their couch and back in the room. And he just got finished trying to figure out how to get them on Zoom. There's pressure in the driver's seat. Now, I like how we see in the scripture that the God that we serve is a great God. Because he shows how masterful he is because while he's doing one thing, he's working on another. You said, how do you know that? Well, in, when I was reading, and I don't know if you caught it, in 14, it says, return home, you wayward children, says the Lord, for I am your master. I will bring you back to the land of Israel, one from this town and two from that family, from wherever you are scattered. Next scripture says, and I will give you the shepherds of my own heart. So once you do one thing, while, you, while God is trying to concentrate on you doing one thing, he's asking you and preparing already something else. And not a beautiful thing because he says, if you can just repent and turn back from your, uh, uh, turn back from your wicked ways and get back on track with me, and I will give you shepherds after my own heart. I'm so glad I serve a God that knows how to be a master in the and, come on, I do this at my church all the time. Come on. All right. We good. We good, Pop? Okay, okay, okay. Just relax. All right. <laughs> all right. But he's a master at the and. 
and I want to come and tell somebody that, that, that you might be one checkbox away from your end. See, he, see, see, see you're wondering huh, huh, why you're sitting in a complacent spot. No, uh, you're not sitting in a complacent spot. You're not working your spots. And you might be just one checkbox away from the end. Because, 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 you got to check it. In verse 15, he said, I and I will give you shepherds after my own heart. And I will give, but, but see, that and is already preceded by something else you got to do. Return home, you wayward children. You got to come home first. For I am your master, not them that's out there been telling you and trying to lead you along the way. I am your master. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. One from this town and two from that family. He said, I don't even got to get the whole family. If it's just two of you, come on. If it's one of you from the city, come on. Because whoever wants to or whoever has the will to, let them come, and then I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will guide you with the right knowledge and understanding. You're about one checkbox away from your end. I just, God just wanted me to come here today and, and let the people know that, 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 that there's, there's a space that you're in right now that you're just not working. You done got tired. I understand. You keep trying to climb up the hill. You keep sliding back down. I get it. But 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 what? But but don't but don't quit. Because that's what the enemy wants you to do. See, see, as you keep going up and you sliding back down, your hope is getting lower and lower. And if he take your hope, he got you. See, see, and that's where you got to keep the faith and, and, and let the and let the devil know. Uh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. In my heart, I remember that he'll never leave me nor forsake me. Oh, 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 I'm above and beneath. I, oh, 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 I'm going to be a lender and not a borrower. Oh, 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 these are who I really am. I'm a part of a royal priesthood. Hold on. Let me suit back up and go back up the mountain because I got to get to my end. Aren't you glad you have a pastor and a first lady that's going to teach you the right thing? They don't want you to be regular. Don't want you to be comfortable in your comfort zone, lingering in mediocrity, always craving what's easy. I'm so glad I have him on my team because he's going to push me. See, a lot of people don't like being pushed, but if you don't like being pushed, then you like standing still, and that makes me itch too. I don't know about y'all, I, it just makes my skin crawl for folks to be in the same place that they were last year. I, my heart goes out to those people who sit on the high school fence in they two little letterman jacket talking about <laughs> what they used to do. And then trying to give the high school coach and the high school players, all they tidbits. But they ain't never touched the NFL field. But then they tell you how they could have went pro. Yeah, y'all, y'all seen them? They could have went pro. They... Take that off. Uh, my heart goes out to them. I pray for them. Because if that's the greatest accomplishment that you have, woe would be to your life. And they talk about it like it's the wonder years. And they got three kids. I'm like, what about them? That wasn't. But, you know, I digress. Pressure three. Trying to get them to hear your voice. That's a pressure there. Jeremiah had reservations about going to do this assignment way back in chapter one. He had some reservations about it, just like Moses did. And then I love how God led him uh, to this understanding. Just say what I tell you to say. And Jeremiah says that God touched his lips and 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 sealed it. And and he knew then that if he had, he had the confidence then that if I just say what God tells me to say, he'll do all the drawing. See, too, a lot of times, sometimes, a lot of times, saints, we talk out of turn. 
we, we, we talk like we the Savior. Instead of just giving the instruction and let him do the drawing. Sometimes we try to do the drawing and the expelling. Somebody say, stay in your lane. Oh, yeah, stay in your lane. John in the New Testament, they, uh, John in the New Testament, uh, verse 10, verse 27, it says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I have come to realize in um, my tenure as senior pastor that two things can be true at the same time. I can be, and we can agree that, uh, a member at my church, we can agree that I am the pastor of David Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. But the question is, am I their pastor? Let me say that for a little slower for people that are still chewing on it. We all can agree in this room and on this program that the pastor and the first lady is sitting right here on the first row. But the question still remains, is he your pastor? Is she your first lady? Does what they say hold any weight in your life? I told you he's my spiritual covering, and by that, it doesn't mean that all our conversations are agreeable. But when he makes me upset, I don't stop calling him. I don't get mad and turn my back on him because he is my path. He is. He holds weight in my life, and everything everything that he says to me, even though it, I might not uh, 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 thought it was the most sweetest thing for me to swallow, I know where his heart is for me. Question is, is this your pastor? Is this your first lady? Do they really hold weight? If he says no, do you stop paying your tithe? Even in, even in my early tenure, I know when, when we have a bad church meeting because I uh, uh, was one particular member, shall rename nameless for the, saint, for the sanctif sanctification of the house, amen. <laughs> they would remove a zero from the tithe. And then when the meeting goes in their favor, the zero would come back. You don't, and then my question to them, you know you don't pay for voice. The tithe is something spiritual between you and God. So you think you stealing from me <laughs> or you take it from me. No, 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 that's between you and the Lord. Because when you took your zero, the light still stayed on. <laughs> the water still ran cold. So understand that, 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 that what's, what, what you're trying to make a personal endeavor can never be because this thing that we call ministry is always and should remain spiritual. So is this your pastor? Is this your spiritual covering? Do you, all of a sudden when he make you mad, you stop coming a couple of Sundays? Do you start having secret meetings? I told you I'm a missionary Baptist church, so I know about secret meetings. Amen. Start having meetings and, 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 and gatherings that are unsanctioned and, and, and things, of, things that are in secret meetings that's going to happen while the past. Okay. All right. Here we go. I'm back in here. Okay. I'm right here. We good. I even did this to my wife one day. We were driving down the road. She's rolling. She's driving at this time. She's in the driver's seat. I've been out all day. 
been telling I want to go home. <laughs> she just keeps taking me from here to here, asking me for the card. Ain't asking me what I want. <laughs> just asking me for the card. Then I question popped in my head. I said, am I your husband? She said, what? <laughs> I said, am I your husband? I said, the people that was at the wedding in the state of Texas know I'm your husband on paper. But am I your husband? Does what I say really matter to you? Does it hold any weight? And then, like a good wife, she said, am I your wife? <laughs> and I taught over this in, in, a, in, a, in a Bible study, but, and I want to bring it to the house, is that when you ask that question, wait on the answer. A lot of times we talk too much. We ask great questions, and then we talk over the answer. So... Again, I want to pull this back into your own living room. When you ask, am I your husband? Wait. Don't let her talk about sandwiches. What's for dinner? You know, what, you know, what happened at work? You nod your head like you're supposed to. Say, mm-hmm. Right. Back to my question. And lay the same thing. Am I your wife? And then wait on the answer. And, and, and we're bad at communication, so just watch what we do, too. <laughs> watch what we do, too. Because it's the uncomfortable wait that we all have to understand is necessary. Pastor Bob Davis, the first lady, has to ask, do they hold any weight in your life? And that's the pressure and the anxiety that builds up because do you not understand that a leader can't be a leader without any followers? Do you understand the weight of his heart, of their heart, when they ask us to be somewhere and we don't show up? He probably not going to tell you, but it breaks our heart because we assume and we expect that we have a certain weight in your life, but then when it comes for me asking something of you, you don't show up. But when you call, let me not answer. Let me not be able to go to the hospital. Let me not be able to go to the funeral. He called himself a man of God. And you call me your pastor. Because it also takes, in the same way you're saying, well, I had this to do, I had that to do, and it takes sacrifice to get there. It takes sacrifice for him to get where he's trying to get. You think he's just sitting up there waiting by the phone? Waiting on somebody to call so I can move. Every time I'm talking to this man, I get 15 minutes, and then he has to hang up because he's doing something somewhere. <laughs> Don't matter what, what, what it is. On his day off, he might give me five. <laughs> but this man here, we have to understand, is he your pastor? Does he really have the influence that he thinks he has in your life? Or are you just playing church? Or... He's just a pastor of the church you go to. And that's okay. Because the same way God didn't hold it against the children of Israel because they're doing what they want to, not following in line, this man of God has a heart for the people and he doesn't hold it against you. How much influence does he have? I'm going to close with this. The driver's seat is the most important seat. And since I've been revealing a whole bunch of stuff today, I'm going to let you know, I don't like when my wife drives my car. 
I don't. And if y'all say I said it out loud, I'm going to say that you're telling a story. (laughs) But the reason why I don't like it is because every time, without fail, when I get back in my car, I got to adjust. That's any brothers in here say that? Hey, come on, come on. Or oh, the women too. You don't hate we you know, don't drive my car unless you're gonna put it back. Had it. Get in there, my knees up here. What is going on? But I don't like it, and then I'm furiously texting her in the morning. Why you didn't put this seat back? And I used to get real mad at it until I understood in communication, you got to stop reacting and learn how to respond. Emotions will make you react. And it will cover up the revelation that you're really supposed to get when people are trying to communicate with you. So as I learn, and still learning, how to communicate and respond instead of react, I finally were able to listen to what she was saying. And my lovely wife would say, first of all, and this is all through text. This is where, this is the way I, you know, brothers understand when you read that text, you hear her voice. First of all, good morning. (laughs) You don't sit here and text me, you don't say nothing. Good morning. I adjusted it because it wasn't comfortable for me. We have to understand that the driver's seat has to be comfortable for the person that's driving. And when you get in the driver's seat, you have to Buckle up, and then once you get your seat right where you need it, you have to then adjust your mirrors so you can see your hater from the back, the sides, and if they coming straight at you through the windshield, you got to be able to have to adjust that seat in the proper manner. But one thing that I realize is that when I get in my seat, I adjust it to my specifications, and once she gets in, and once she gets in the seat, she adjusts it to her specifications, and that's okay, because the object is to get from point A to point B safely, to get to the next safely, to get to the next without losing someone's life or putting anyone in danger. It's about getting to the next destination. And then I started thinking about this, and the host would have put it on my heart, that watching Pastor Bob, I'm going to call you Pops, I'm like, I'm like grandson over here, Papa, whatever. <laughs> when I'm looking at this, the journey, Pastor Bob had to just get in the seat and adjust it to his specifications. So it's probably not going to run like these are they. But it's going to run perfectly for New Legacy. Because when he gets in the seat, he has to adjust it. He has to adjust it to his specifications. He can't, he can't, he can't leave the seat like it was because that's what everyone's comfortable with. He can't leave, you know, certain things. Uh, and I'm just, you see what he done done in here. So he can't leave it. He's talking about right. <laughs> he can't leave it the same way because the vision now, and like God told us, I'm doing something new. And I don't get church folks that believe that stuff is supposed to stay the same. You ain't staying the same. And I don't like stuff that, that, that stay the same. You throw it away. You start giving it to the goodwill and other folks because you got something new. And then God has put a new vision to now take this ministry from here to there 
and now you mad because the way he dressed in his seat? He can't see like the other pastor saw because it's a new seat. Secondly, she says, how am I supposed to know how you had it? That's my wife talking again. <laughs> how am I supposed to know how you had it? In this vehicle you call a body, you have to understand that when you're in the driver's seat, that things are going to come at, come at you and if you're not properly buckled in it can dislodge you from the car or you wreck somebody else the man of God has an assignment on his life to bring people to Christ not to make them run from Christ so the vision and the adjustments that he has to make in this time now are going to look a little bit different because he has to deal with the newness of the environment to get them here. God wants us to be in spaces that stretches us and push and pulls us and squeezes and expands our gifts. This is how we, this is how we grow. Sometimes we go through growing pain. And we can't get mad because of the, the growing pains. God told Jeremiah this in chapter 1, verses 17 through 19. And I want to talk to you, Pastor Bob. And I want you to take this to heart. It says to Jeremiah, get up. And prepare for action. Jerem this is after Jeremiah tried to tell him, hey, I can't, I can't do this, God. They're not going to listen to me. He says, he tells them to say what, what I tell you to say. And he says, uh, and to do what I tell you to do. And he says, get up and prepare for action. Go out and tell them not some things, not just the things that they're going to be okay with, but go out and tell them everything. I tell you to say. Verse 17 says, do not be afraid of them or I will make you look foolish in front of them. Don't be afraid of them or I'll make you a fool in front of them. God is trying to tell Jeremiah, Jeremiah then, you're going to be more afraid of me than you're going to be afraid of them. Some of you right now are sitting in places in your life of, 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 of complacency because you're scared about what people are going to say. You're scared of the work that it's going to take to get you there. God is trying to say, I'm going to make you a fool in front of all of them if you don't get up and take action. For see, today I have made you strong like a fortified city that cannot be captured. He said, you ain't going to be captured. Don't worry about it. Like an iron pillar or, or, or a bronze wall, you stand against the whole land, the kings, the officials, priests, and people of Judah. I love me a gangster God. I'm going to put that on my dough when I go to work. Uh, I'm like an iron pillar of bronze wall. You stand against the whole land. I'm standing against the kings, the officials, the priests, the people of Judah, them kids, that principal. I'm standing against everybody. They will fight you, but they will fail. That's verse 19. They will fight you, but they will fail. Fight me if you want to. I'm good. Because you're going to fail. For I am with you. Not because my hands are good, and I, I promise they're pretty good. But, 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 but he says, fight, but they will fail. For I am with you. I will take care of you. Fight, first lady. Fight, Pastor Bob. For the Lord has spoken. There's pressure in the driver's seat. But you've been handling it well. We're here today to tell you that you've been handling it well. If you believe that Pastor Bob and First Lady have been handling it well, say amen.